when did this interest in MDR start? Uh, <laughs> Your interest? My interest. In fact, we have a publication in 2001. Ah, so. And yes, long time ago. And we wanted to debunk EMDR, showing that it's not sensible. And something came out that, yes, the eye movements did work, but we didn't really understand why. And we published it, and then I left it. And then in 2008, Gunther and Botman from Canada published a very good paper on behavior research and therapy. And then our interest got re aroused. They used our protocol from 2001 uh. in Canada, and they had beautiful effects of very interesting data and a very good theory, the working memory theory, very you know, well developed and clearly tested. So we got interested again. And then it was very fruitful because we did some, I think, 18 experiments in, in three, four years' time. So it very, really made a great swing. And I was, I was happy to see that the EMBR community gave us this prize, the International Prize for EMBR Research or something, which I would never have expected. So, so it was basically 2001 and now 2008 it was re-aroused. So did you share skepticism at the beginning? Yeah, I was very skeptical. I was very skeptical. Very, yes, I was in the Netherlands, I was involved in debate about this, and I thought basically it was nonsensical, it didn't make sense. <laughs> so, and now after this positive empirical data, the theoretical and clinical uh, connection with the general cognitive behavioral theory, how do you see it? It's not. So, is, do we have only the empirical confirmation of effectiveness or that? Well, uh, what we have now is with meta-analysis on the clinical effects, mm. showing that clinical effects are there. This is one. And the second is that we have an explanation in, in more or less solid cognitive psychological terms on what's going on imagination, inflation, imagination, deflation. <coughs> so I think that we, what we try to do is understand EMDR from a psychological point of view. And is this process present also in CBT without EMDR, at least partially? This process of imagination, working memory? I don't think so. I, don't, I, 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 I would be surprised. I, what we did find was that there are procedural commonalities, similarities mm. between EMDR and mindfulness. And mindfulness, not CBT. Not CBT. I think when it comes to mindfulness, you also see that therapists ask the patient, whenever a negative, after session four or something, mm. therapist to say, if a unpleasant thought comes up, yes. about suicide or whatever, you don't resist the thought, you don't throw it away, just accept the thought and simultaneously mm -hmm. do the, ma the, 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 the breathing, the, the mindful yes. breathing. And the mindful breathing, again, is taxing working memory. So there's a similarity between EMDR, come up with a negative me me memory and make eye movements, and <coughs> mindfulness. If a negative thought is there, start the breathing. It's also a dual task. And we see that in the lab, mindful breathing behaves the same as eye movements. Mm. So we can affect only. Uh, so I don't see very obvious similarities between mm. EMDR yes. and CBT, but there's uh, some procedural similarities <coughs> between mindfulness. Yeah, and and so a cognitive disputing in which you encourage the patient to accept before, I don't know, M EMDR and mindfulness, how do you see this possibility, if you are, of possibility to combine? Combine well, mindfulness and EMDR? No, you encourage the okay, patient yes. in CBT, yes. the cognitive disputing uh, as the result to encourage the patient to accept yes. the trauma using EMDR a motivation, a sort of cognitive motivation. You cannot free yourself of this memory, accept it. So a sort of... Yes, it can. I think it can. It, it, I don't 
see any reasons why this couldn't be integrated in a wider package of CBT. Where you say, well, this is something that happened, and there's no other way than accept that this has happened. We can, you can think about the implications. Does it mean you get crazy? Does it mean you're guilty? Did you do something wrong? We can discuss all this. But also, there's the memory itself. The memory that's so vivid and painful. <coughs> and the painfulness and vividness of the memory can be reduced by EMDR. So we see it in our clinic where some of the good EMDR therapists mm. are doing part of the therapy. Yes. Well, They're yes. just well, targeting, well, targeting the memory. And they have a discussion with the CBT, the cognitive therapist, yes. and have to, to, to get together with the cognitive therapist and the patient have a, have a conference with the three of them. And they're just targeting one or two of the memories. In ah, order yes. to bring the, the vividness and the painfulness of this memory down. So you use the, the cognitive treatment to ascertain the, the memories on which focus the MDR or something like that? Well, it's not, not really that. We, uh, most EMDR people can, at least the EMDR clinicians that I am, I'm, I'm in an intervision group. Mm -hmm. It's quite some EMDR. Ah, yes. Therapist. And they're pretty well able. I mean, just to, they typically they focus on the most horrible aspect yes. of the trauma and it's just ask the patient I mm -hmm. mean what's the most horrible aspect that's, yes. that's haunting you in, in nightmares etc <coughs> but what you can do is, is use the EMDR as a, as a standalone treatment but also I think use it as part of a more encompassing treatment uh, another question what, what do you think about the application of EMDR to a very different form of of pathology worry in which there is not very vivid memories like uh, trauma but the opposite a person who use worry as Tom Borkovec told us use worry to detach from a <laughs> vivid uh, experience I, I would say that well from work memory perspective yes it should be contraindicated contraindicated because what you would you would encourage the worrying GAD patient uh. to confront things and say, well, it is possible yes. that my husband is going to die or that, but it's, it's just see what, what, what would happen. Very concrete. He would be lying there in yes. a coffin, he would have a financial problem, he would, how could you deal with it and see it for very vividly and clearly. But if you, so the, I think, think that worry, in a sense, is the opposite of PTSD. Yes. PTSD are worried about, about and they have intrusions that are very very vivid <coughs> and very lively and very clear etc and whereas the opposite happens to yes. and therefore also mindfulness is contraindicated would be uh, I don't know if no well you could accept it. because also mindfulness would uh, detach you <laughs> yes what well, I show, I saw the show this sheet about memory inflation mm. and perhaps it would be good enough. It's it more it would more rational I guess to have to, to persuade the patient to look at the images to look mm. really at it so this is it yes there is a real there is a possibility mm. that you will die or Okay, thank you to Marcel van der Noot in Rome at the Italian Cognitive Society Conference. My pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye.